We're back uh, with more conversations on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. And our guest is uh, uh, nicely poised to do justice to this conversation. Well, I'm sure you already know by now that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, uh, on Tuesday released uh, the final list. That's Nigeria's uh, electoral body. Released the final list of the presidential candidates that it cleared to contest the uh, February 25 uh, election and indeed other elections. But... Um, uh, we have the governorship and uh, presidential law, let's say the state and national elections. Among those cleared are the candidates of the All Progressives Congress, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the People's Democratic Party, uh, Tiko Abubakar, the Labour Party, Peter B, and the New Nigeria People's Party, Rabi Musa Kwankwa, so they're part of the 18 cleared for the presidential uh, election. The names of their running mates were also listed. Uh, the names were contained in the list sent to media organizations, of which uh, Plus TV received one. Uh, it also re also released were the names and particulars of the candidates for the senatorial election and the House of Representatives election elections into the two chambers hold the same day as the presidential election, February 25. Uh, also released were names and particulars of the candidates uh, for the senatorial election and House of Representatives election, uh, as we said earlier. Now, other information provided in the list are their age, their gender, and their academic qualification. The electoral body had, uh, if you remember, in June, uh, published a temporary list of the candidates in line uh, with a timetable and schedule of activities uh, for the 2023 polls. Now, what I, Anik is saying is that uh, 1,100 and one candidates are vying for the 109 senatorial seats, uh, while 3,122 are vying for the 360 seats in the House of Representatives. Now, joining us to uh, provide some analysis of this is Public Affairs Analyst Nika Gulinik. A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much. All right. Um, um, good morning to our viewers. Thank you so much. Any surprises for you, having looked at the names on the list, uh, those who, who were hits and those who were misses? Any surprises for you? No, I don't have any surprises. Uh, it is expected already for the presidential candidates. We already had a glimpse of those who are standing. So this list has only confirmed uh, the names of the people we already know and, and who have already been going around the country. Uh, because remember, for the major parties, their primaries uh, were in national focus. So we already know that these are the candidates that were expected to be on the ballot. So uh, majorly, there was nothing surprising about the list. All right. Um, uh, s some people have pointed to the, the qualifications of these uh, candidates. So let's dive straight into that. Um, some of the candidates uh, have a school certificate, uh, WAEC or GCE, as the case may be. Some have master's, um, uh, a, a master's degree holders. Some just have the bachelor's degree. It seems there's, there's some confusion as regards the academic qualifications of some, of some candidates because there are some candidates who you expect that they would have their bachelor's and you, it's public knowledge that they went to university, but they didn't put the bachelor's degree certificate up there. Uh, there's some candidates who may have a master's degree that's widely publicized, but there's nothing on this list, on this sheet, this per spreadsheet to show that they actually presented the, 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 the certificate to INEC. What do you think is at play here? I think that's a very good point that you have pointed out. Because I noticed that myself, that there are candidates, some of them uh, are already in the public eye, and there are qualifications that we have come to associate them with, and those things were not listed against their names. And I think um, they are, it, this could stem from uh, one or two reasons. The first reason is simply because uh, uh, INEC did not make a more detailed compilation. That is a reason. The second reason is if the candidates uh, deemed it that since the first school living certificate as a minimum requirement is enough for them. I mean, in the case, in the case of uh, President Buhari, I think some lawyers were even interpreting the constitution to say 
you don't even need an educational qualification, you know, to stand for election. So if they perhaps thought they have already met the minimum and therefore they don't need to state all the certificates that they have or the certifications that they have could be another reason. But also there could be a third reason. And that third reason is that some of these qualifications that people bind you about, some of them are either not received or are received from dodgy institutions. When I mean dodgy institutions that haven't been recognized by the appropriate bodies in Nigeria, being the National Universities Commission, as legitimate uh, certifications, are now not wanting to step them because they don't want to go into litigation where they will be challenged on the veracity of the qualifications that are appended against their names. So that could also be a reason that candidates who are not sure of their qualifications have decided to keep them out so that um, they don't have to go into any controversy that will eventually probably end up in court. I also noticed that there are candidates that don't have any qualification whatsoever stated against them, their names. So I don't know in that case whether it's an error of compilation from INEC that they decided not to pick any qualifications on the nomination forms and put on this list, or the candidates themselves said they did not go to school. They have no certification whatsoever. And that is why that field for certification is blank. But I think these are questions that INEC will have to answer in the coming days. If people are standing for elections, we want to know what their certifications are. Because uh, give it or uh, leave it or take it, uh, a person's capacity to deliver is broadened with education. When we go to school, imagine a child uh, growing up, knowing nothing. With education, they are able to become a surgeon. That means they are able to split human beings apart remove certain parts, repair some parts, and close those human beings back. And the human beings later jump down from bed, and they are living their life, walking around. You can never get that capacity except you have gone to school. So there's a lot that we gain when we go to school, we have an education, and we want to know that the people we are going to vote for in 2023 have had some level of education because we know it impacts on their eventual performance when they get into office. So these are questions that INEC has to answer in the coming days as to why some of the candidates don't have any qualifications whatsoever stated against their name. And some candidates that in the public eye, we already know have higher qualifications, but they were not stated in there. Uh, so well. I mean, maybe we'll probably come back to the conversation of uh, qualification or whether or not it matters. Uh, of course, we know that the Constitution is very explicit as regards, uh, you know, qualification for different positions, especially if you're vying for position. But let's still stay with, you know, the issue with the list and those who made it and didn't make it. Uh, Akbar Lawan's name didn't make it, but of course, Apabio made it. And the case here, it's a bit, I mean, some similarity with both parties, but one made it and one did not make it. I'd like you to share your thoughts on it. So if I go by the explanation of uh, INEC regarding these two candidates, INEC said that in Akpabio's case, a court order is what forced their hands to put Akpabio's name on the list. And uh, probably there is no such court order uh, in the allowance case, or that case could still be in court, or yeah, yeah, it's in the pipeline. But if INEC eventually gets a court order for the allowance case, I believe they will also put his name on the list. So that's the differentiating factor between the two uh, candidates. Otherwise, their, their cases are similar, they are the same, uh, and Akpabio is on the list. And also, Akpabio's case. Uh, a court order ordering INEC uh, to put his name on the list doesn't mean that the court process, the, the judicial process has ended. Uh, probably the other parties might want to go on appeal. So until the case is finally adjudicated, perhaps by the highest court in the land, the Supreme Court, 
before the Akpabio's case can also be confirmed. All right. Uh, um, uh, let's let's look at uh, I mean one or one or two of the candidates. Uh, I'm just going to this list here, and um, there's some controversy regarding uh, um, the the presidential candidates. So some debate amongst the um, the 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 supporters of uh, three leading candidates as far as um, uh, the polls or the conversations online and everything is concerned. Uh, the supporters of um, Atiku Abubakar are saying, "Oh." He's the only presidential candidate that uh, amongst the uh, leading three that you know, we normally talk about, uh, uh, PDP, APC, and Labour Party, that has uh, a master's degree, and that should uh, you know, put him ahead of the pack. What are your thoughts on, 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 on this? Uh, you've talked about it, you touched on this in a bit, but I want us to dovetail into these three parties. Uh, PDP having Atiku Abubakar, who has a master's degree, um, if you look at what, uh, permit me to just cast my eyes on, on this list, if you look at what, and I hope that we can just blow that on the screen as well, look at what the, um, uh, the APC has. Um, you have Bola Betinubu, um, you know, 70 mil, BSC um, Business Administration. You look at um, his vice presidential candidate, BSC Agriculture, that's talking about uh, Kashim Shetima. So uh, do you think that Atiku is ahead of the the big three the other big three candidates because he has a master's degree in terms of what he can bring to the table uh, as a president of nigeria permit me to go back in history a bit in nigeria in our 62 years of independence there was a time where all that was being said was because uh, nigeria was not being governed well uh, because of the fact that no graduate had uh, taken the reins of power as, as the leader of Nigeria, either as a president or head of state. Because, you know, we started from the Tafa Balewa times into the military, and, you know, the military people, in, in those days when they went to NDA, they didn't get a degree. Uh, NDA became a degree-awarding institution at some point. In fact, the earlier military boys uh, went to Sandust, or other shot in the UK uh, or tertiary in Ghana, they, they didn't come out with degrees because they spent basically like two years, three years in the military academy and they were commissioned as officers. So from Tafawa Belewa to the military boys, all the way to Shagari, you know, we we didn't have uh, graduates who were who were president. Even when we got to Obasanjo, you know, Obasanjo qualifications were also uh, in controversy. So Nigerians uh, were saying, oh, because we don't have a graduate uh, to have led Nigeria previously, this is why Nigeria is not being governed well. And so we, we rose from no degree to a PhD. We got good, in good Lord Jonathan, we had a PhD holder become president of Nigeria, but nothing changed. Good Lord Jonathan did not show anything that we indicate to us that a person's uh, academic qualifications can actually be a, a, a differentiating factor. So the, to me, the first qualification, the real first qualification that somebody needs for the office of president or all the other political offices across the land is the human qualities of that person, the human qualities. For instance, if you have a compassionate person, naturally, this person is compassionate, meaning the person's heart met at the sufferings of others. A person that when he sees suffering, wants to do everything to, 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 to solve it. That is the qualification that is needed. But when the person now goes to school and obtains academic qualifications, that only enhances that person's capacity to deliver. If not that being the case, then you can bring professors. Look, we have had professors who have taken on positions of uh, um, uh, authority. I know that Professor Osumbo was governor in those states. You know, we have had professors as ministers, as commissioners. Professors have come into the political space in different roles. We even have professors who preside over the, the elections. And you can see that they don't bring their professorial uh, qualifications to that table. 
That's a clear indication that it is the person's human qualities that matter most, more than the academic qualifications. The academic qualifications are only enhancers. They are enhancers to the performance. But if that person is bad, he will remain bad, even if he has got all the degrees in the world. So coming to your question directly, articles, qualifications, having a master's degree, why the other candidates don't have a master's degree means absolutely nothing in the scheme of things. All if right. Atiku is a good just, man, he's a good <laughs> man. If he's a bad yeah. man, his qualification will help him. Right. Just before Messi comes in, let me just put this out there that um, there was some controversy because on uh, beside Peter B's name, they just wrote degree. There was nothing there to show what kind of degree that was. And there was some talk of him not being able to present a certificate to Aynekem. One of his aides um, was uh, able, uh, Obaze, or Selika Obaze, put out on his Twitter page yesterday, Wednesday, September 21, uh, Obi's NYSC certificate and his degree certificate. He had a second class upper, a lower division, sorry, in philosophy. <laughs> Maybe that shows why he, he talks <laughs> the way he does. Um, you have uh, the, 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 the worst qualified, lowest qualified um, uh, ticket uh, or duo being the ADC of Kachikudu Mebi and his running mate. Uh, having uh, just uh, presented school set. Though I, I suspect they have more than that. But the most qualified, uh, Nick Agule, seems to be Rabbi Musa Kwankoso and his running mate, Bishop Isaac Idaosa of NMPP, who are both uh, PhD holders. They were able to show, actually, uh, uh, progression in all the things they presented of the academic uh, 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 journey so far. Merci. Well, uh, Nick Agule... Okay. Sorry. Well, let's move away from that now. And I mean, you, you uh, the perspective and insight that you brought, I mean, very valid because, uh, like you have rightly mentioned, uh, we have seen professors as governors, and uh, there's nothing really uh, that's been professed by them. At the end of the day, look at the states and nothing to show for it. And so, uh, a conversation for another time. But I'd like to ask you now. What do you think the, the implication is? Now that INEC has put out the list, uh, this is the final list, what's the implication of this for uh, political parties as we inch closer to 2023? Thank you very much for that question. Before I answer the question, let me just, uh, you know, conclude by on the last point to say that if I look at that list in terms of the qualifications that INEC have listed, I think INEC actually just went and copied exactly what the candidates put in their nomination forms and put on their website. So I need needs to do some data cleanup. For instance, I'll give you an example. For some candidates, they wrote uh, abbreviated FSLC. That is First School Living Certificate. I need put it FSLC. Candidates that wrote First School Living Certificate, I need actually wrote First School Living Certificate. So if I need was going to abbreviate FSLC should have done that for all candidates. And if they are writing first school living certificate, they do the same all to all candidates. You know, I'm from Benway, so I took interest in the Benway list. There is one candidate there who wrote first school living. The living was not L-E-A-V-I-N-G. It was L-I-V-I-N-G. And that is exactly what INEC has there. So I think there's cleanup that needs to be done in terms of INEC. Now, uh, coming to your question, uh, what does this mean? Well, what this means for us, the electorate, is that we now have a full picture of those who are standing for national elections. And we have to begin to interrogate, interrogate them now. We need to start to listen to them. We need to have to follow them. We need to dig into their past. You see, in those nations where democracies are working and citizens are enjoying life, this is what happens. The citizens including individuals, groups, the, the, the media, and the civil society, and everybody will be out now scrutinizing these candidates, checking what they have done in the past. Because, you see, what people have done in the past is a clear pointer to what they will do in the future. It's not what they are talking now. They could just be sweet talking us into giving them votes. But what they have done in the past is very important. And we need to dissect all that. We need to unravel these people. We need to uncover them. We need to expose them so that we know the people we are going to the polls to vote for. Because, you see, as they say, prevention is better than cure. We have to make sure we get the right people into office. Because if we don't get the right people into office and we allow them to get into office and then we hope 
that we are going to change them while they are in office so that they will deliver good governance to us. That's what we have tried in the last 22 years and it has not worked for us. So this list is now on the table. What it means for us is to look into it critically and begin to look at these people. And, 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 the, and, and the enlightened community, the enlightened uh, section of our, of, our, of our country are the ones that have to take the lead. You know, there are a lot of voters in the villages that probably don't even have access to the internet. They have not even seen this list at all. They don't even know who is on the, on the ballot. And it is for those of us who are knowledgeable, we have seen the list, we know these people, everybody should be talking back to their people in the village and saying, that man that stood for Senate is a bad man. Right. That man that stood for House or Rep, he can't do anything for you. But Nick, we, Nick, we, 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 we have, we have to go. Uh, uh, since apologies, yeah. we, we have to pull the plugs on that because we've been told we overshot that time. Uh, but I'm sure the, the conversation will continue. We have some months to go till February 25. But thank you so much for your time and your expert analysis as always. Thank you so very much for this time. Uh, All right. Have a nice day. Merci. You too. L leaving instead of leaving. <laughs> you know, like um, one of the um, announced protesters was holding a placard. You know, university students now, they ought to know. They spelled dying as D I E I N G. D what? D I E I N G, dying. You know, it's, it's amazing what we see. All right, anyway, we'll be right back. Let's take a short break. We have uh, further discussions ahead on the breakfast.